but you force yourself to fit. But inside them, they know you don't fit. That boy you are running around with, he knows you don't fit. So they saw that priest, they said, what are you doing here? And he said, well, you see, I was passing just like you. And God answered my prayer. And this man employed me. And I am in charge of his house of God, brother. But there is one house of God in Shiloh. We are the priest ought to be, but it's too far. So we have another one here that is convenient. I'm the priest over that one. You know what they said? They went in. When they entered, you know what they saw? They saw graven image. They saw airport. They saw everything that has to do with religion. They saw cross. They saw the picture of Mary. And they saw the picture of Moses everywhere. They saw, they saw the offering box also. I'm sure the offering box must be big. Hallelujah. And they saw the anointing oil. I know what they said. To the law and to the testimony. They said, okay, man of God. Which God? Man of God, man of God, cut a prophecy for us. Do you know the meaning of the name of Micah? Who is like unto God? That's the meaning of the name of Micah. Who is like Yahweh? The name of Micah is who is like Yahweh. What a shame. The man whose name is who is like unto God is the one that established an alternative God. My question is, what is the relationship of your name with the way you are living? Many times people change their names. Some people have attacked me, say, why is your name still Oshokoya? I said, what should I do? I said, I should change you to Olukoya or Adekoya. That's fine. But is it God that is asking me to change or I'm the one changing? Because if you, some people have changed their name, said, my name is Shegun Success. My name is Favor. My name is uh, Success Victory. Some people say my name is Miss Wealth. Can I ask you a question? Who changed Abraham's name? Who changed Sarah's name? Who changed your own? <laughs> Me, I don't know. Who changed your own? I'm not saying you should not change, but what is motivating the change? If somebody's name is Tokumbo and he says, I don't like Tokumbo, my name is now Mr. Prosperity. I know what is motivating that name. That's your goal. Question. How many people know the story of Jabez? How many people know the story of Jabez? He sought the Lord and God changed the situation, but he did change his name. Ponder on that. Man of God! Cut us with prophecy. And the man said, The Lord will surely prosper your way. The wandering priest, the contract priest said, The Lord will prosper your way. Did you hear from somebody? Yes. The shrine. The six went. What happened to them? They came to a land and saw the Sidonians. It's called the Lies. The people were wealthy, prosperous, had nothing lacking. Nepal, 24 hours. The roads tied. What else? Can you tell me what else you need in your society? Water running. No, no. 
no fuel scarcity. In fact, while you are sleeping, automatically your car is fueled. Go and read your book of Judges chapter 18. The Bible said the people were in plenty. They were in pleasure. They needed nothing and they lacked nothing. You said their ground was fertile. But they were far from everybody. So these spies came to the place and saw them. And they saw that they had no standing army. They had nobody to protect them. Remember the prayer of the priest. He said, the Lord will prosper your... Has the Lord not prospered their ways? I want you to notice that these Dianites, they express no emotion of surprise at the indignation of a Levite daring to assume the function of a priest. And at the same time, the existence of a rival establishment to that of Shiloh. Two things should have worried them. That, ah, ah, you are just a Levite. How can you be a priest? Two, how can you be a priest over a chapel that has shrine? Whereas the real chapel has the Ark of Covenant. It didn't bother them. They just received prophecy from him. Question. How many people have asked pastors, how did you get born again? Who's your spiritual father? Testimony of your life. As long as they can prophesy. Arsenal is going to win Chelsea. For Christ's sake. Do you, are you telling me God has no other business to do than to be predicting who wins in a football match? You know the reason why some people are popular? Because they can be in Nigeria and predict that there will be a plane crash in Korea. If somebody says there will be a plane crash in Korea and plane crash does not want to happen, will he not talk to... And if there is no strong man inside that plane, the plane will crash and the man of God will be healthy. Everybody will say he's a wonderful man of God. People will bring money. Then he will sacrifice to his idols. I mean, if you remember a plane that crashed recently, the pilot had practiced. He was in depression. He was a co-pilot. He had practiced. He had decided he was going to crash the plane. Allah majani njote biyumpono. He decided he was going to crash the plane. He was not the main pilot. They entered the plane normally. And when the main pilot decided to go to the toilet, as soon as he went out, he locked the door and drove the plane and crashed it and killed everybody. According to the story, the main pilot, when he came out of the toilet, started knocking. He did not have until he crashed the plane. It was when they went to his house, they found that he had been practicing how to crash the plane. They thought they said he was in depression. That's a medical name for demonic possession. Just call agricultural instrument. Call it a spade. It's a demonic oppression. And unfortunately, there was nobody in that plane that can stand and say, I sense a demonic presence. I rebuke you. Now, there might be Christians in that plane. They will not go to hell. They will go to heaven. But they, don't, they will not have all the rewards that they used to, they're supposed to have because they may not have finished their purpose. But let me tell you something. Just because the prophecy came to pass does not make the source to be right and does not make the destination God. 
the priest in Micah prophesied into their lives and said, the Lord will prosper your ways. And they went and they saw what they were looking for. When they came back, they went straight to Dan and said, we have seen somewhere where we can destroy and take over. And they moved with 600 people. And they went. And on their way, they passed my car's house again. Hello? Hello? They went beside my car's house again. And as they were passing, the six men said, do you know in that house there is a pastor there? How many people know the story? They told, they said, do you know there is a pastor there? They said, the other 600 said, in this environment, really, a pastor, a Levite in this environment, said, yes, oh. Eh? Yes, oh. And let me tell you, he was the one that prophesied to us, oh. They said, eh? Ah. Anointing one bell. Anointing day there, oh. And they said, okay, immediately, what is true success or blessing? The outward success of their mission did not correspond with the Lord's plan for the tribe of Dan. And eventually, in establishing, they established Dan as the center of idolatry. Hear me. When they told the other, the other said, a pastor that anointed in a small house like this. We need, a big, we need him in the bigger place. Strategic thinking. Grow your dream. Make it big. Pursue it. Strategic. Think strategically. You know what they did? Some people stay at the gate. Some people enter the shrine. You know what they did first? They stole the God. Can your God be stolen? They stole the God. And when they were stealing the dog, the God, the Levites came and said, what are you doing? What a stupid statement. Did you not see them stealing God? I said, what are you doing? You know what they said? They said, Sir, Don't talk. Now, listen, listen. You know you are the one that prophesied to us and we receive success. He said, yes. He said, what's the size of your church here? He said, uh, Micah and a few people in the neighborhood. Let your ministry go big. Oh, Lord, Joe. What me? It's okay. You are pastoring a church of 23. There is a bigger river of an auditorium of 50,000. Which one will you take? Remember, he was a wandering priest looking for. I said, eh? You said you will make me the pastor of the church. How many people left Kano? How many people left Kaduna? How many people left Madiguri? How many people left to come? Let me tell you. Can you listen to me? Many of you don't know what gave room to Boko Haram. Can I tell you today? Let's look at an apostolic, apostolic reason. When the Babangida regime came and bastardized Nigerian economy, I remember, remember that was when we started having finance houses, phone, all kinds of banks. And there seemed to be a funny prosperity. I may remember, they give you, they give you uh, up front. You deposit and they give you the interest up front. I may remember, everybody start. almost every young woman became working, either you are working for a finance bank or a finance house or a bank or everywhere. That was when there was boom in Portacourt and Lagos. Suddenly, the big trees that God planted in the north for the gospel to make sure that they stand as protection from the smaller trees so that when the wind of Islam is coming, the wind, the 
olive trees and the oak will withstand it. You know what they did? They uprooted themselves and came to Portacot. They uprooted themselves and came to Lagos. I, I hope you understand what I'm talking about. As soon as they moved, some other smaller trees too say, ah, if olive tree can move, what am I waiting for? They moved. The palm tree moved. Remember, the palm tree can withstand wind, but he moved. He moved to where there is plenty of money. Banks increased. So when they moved, they left the savannah forest open for the eastern wind. So when the Islamic jihadists came, there was nobody to withstand them. And so they started slaughtering the Christians there. Please, let me tell you, you are celebrating some people here, but their names are no longer in the book because they are not where God asked them to stay. They have a lot of money, but that money is not money for purpose. Let me tell you what happened to me. Please listen to me. If this is the only thing you're going to gain. I tell people, I said, this is not the brother talks you used to know. Something happened to me in February. I went to London to go and preach. For about three or four years now, something has been happening inside me. I want you ministers of God to listen. I've been ministering so good. But inside me, something is not right. I knew something was not right. I knew I was not feeling happy. I can be happy for some few moments, but I, you know, how many people when you are young, you remember what they call fizzles? When you go to a party and they don't want to serve a lot of minerals to the children. That thing comes like tablet, like this. They put it in water. It does. It sweetens the water. When you drink it, it will be sweet in your mouth. But after some time, your mouth will be bitter. Fizzles. I remember remember fizzles. That's the way it was looking to me. I was feeling like fizzles. So when I got to London, I told my brother, I said, I'm not staying in your house. Check me into an hotel. He said, why? I said, I have an appointment with God. In the hotel, and I preach in the evening, throughout the day I will pray. I said, Lord, I want to start as if I just got born again. Because I knew something was wrong. Mashali and Kabosa. Every day, I took tapes from the church. I didn't take any of my own messages. I took other messages. The grace of God and all that. I started listening to them. I started, Lord, what is wrong? One day, as I rose up from the bed, there was a newspaper on my bed. As I was leaving to go and brush my teeth, there are two times that God speaks to me when I'm brushing or when I'm alone in the car and I'm driving. As I was brushing and I heard the Lord said, do you notice that newspaper on your bed? I said, no. Do you notice the size of the advert for Mormon? I said, yes. The half of the page was an advert for Mormon. I said, yes, sir. He said, do you notice that almost 80% of all the big bosses in the street of London on their body has advert for Mormon? I said, yes, sir. He said, do you notice that there's nobody advertising me? I said, do you notice that on television yesterday, they had a program for Islam? I said, yes, sir. He said, who is advertising me? I said, Lord, you know these things cost money. If to say there is money now, I will do it. He said, who told you I'm talking to you? He said, never in the church age have I released money to my church until now. He said, I knew this stage is coming. And I released money to my church. He said, but they did not use it for me. They used it for themselves. I started shivering. I knew I was speaking to God. I started shivering. He said, I released money for the preaching of the gospel. 
but they used it on themselves. He said, let me tell you, many people are envying them. He said, not even heaven, here. He said, it was as if I saw somebody with red eyes. He said, they will suffer. Now, he's not talking about unbelievers. He's talking about men of God that we all follow. He said, they will suffer. He said, any money that is given to you for the gospel that you spend on yourself without clearing for me is a cost. They stole the gods. They negotiated with the priest. He had a bigger ministry and joined them. And the priest, let me tell you, if you follow the way they were going, the 600, they put the priest and the idols in the center. Some soldiers were in the front, some soldiers were in the back, and the priest and the idols were in the center. Where did they get that revelation? From Moses. That is how they move with the Ark of Covenant. And they enter that land and kill everybody in that land and took over the land and established that priest as their priest and they became the center of the church and they started worshipping the idol and the son of Moses who has no right to be a priest became their priest and officially Dan started as a nation with a priest illegal priest do you know what happened? Dan became the nation, the first nation, to have its foundation in idolatry. The people of Dan had strategic plan based on their dreams, which they pursued, because a false god told them to pursue it. And they were pursuing it, and they made it breathe. And the priest, they set him in the center. The way God told Moses in Numbers that when the kingdom is advancing, the Judah must lead first. And then three tribes, then the Ark of Covenant, the priest bearing it, and then they put some other people at the back. That was exactly what they did. They put the priest in the center and they assigned armed escorts for him. Is this not a bigger ministry? Somebody used to go to church alone. You now have escort. Mopol. Is that not what you are looking for? <laughs> Sir, bigger ministry. With, a, with an arm escort going in front of you. Hoi, 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 hoi. And the one at the back. Hoi, 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 hoi. And if any unfortunate Nigerian enter your path whether he's a member of your church or not they will because the priest is passing go and check Judges 18 they put the man in the center they put armed people around him and the gods were with him and then they put armed people at the back you know why? You know why? Please be strategic. Read business, business strategies. Read books. I'm a Bible all the time. Read books. And they planned it accurately. You know why? They could think ahead. They knew that Micah and the neighbors will come. Because you are stolen their pastor, you are stolen their gods, and they, you know, and these guys don't know how to forgive. You know, they normally curse. You know, they normally curse. In their area, they normally curse. Their mother is a curser. And the son is a curser. And the grandson is a cursed. So, as soon as this Dan moved, Micah went to his neighbor. Want to give pastor a while. Neighbor, they have stolen our pastor. Our chapel is empty. They are stolen our pastor. They are stolen our God. They are stolen our God. And everybody gathered. Eh? You can't steal our God. And they gathered together and they pursued the Danites. As soon as they met the Danites, meanwhile, the Danites have surrounded the pastor with armed escort. So 
the first people they met were the tough people in the ch- in Dan. And they said, what are you looking for? They said, you still are. They said, huh, bag, yo. And when they saw that they could not overcome, they went back home crying because they have lost their God. But the problem is this. Let him just stole still no more. It is not only because of the person you have stolen from. It is also because of the danger that can befall you. Because as they stole the gods in Micah's house, the curse in Micah transferred to them. Anointing transfer by association, environment, and influence. That is what is called contact by contamination. Listen. Anointing is transferred by association, influence, and environment. Write it. As soon as they stole the gods of Micah's house, they transferred the cause in Micah. Micah established the culture of idolatry in where? Ephraim. Then they transferred to which people? Do we agree? That Ephraim transferred to the thief commit to do to do what? Cause is the man that did what? Walk it in the counsel of the ungodly, stand in this you have seen that. Do we agree? You transfer anointing by Do we agree? The conclusion is this. A course that started from a woman I know you don't believe this. A course that started from a woman who had no control over the love of money ended up destroying two nations. The generation of Micah is hereby transferred by association, influence, and environment. This is a clear example of contamination by contact. Now, the cause that started from a woman and his son and his grandson and gave birth to a false church and false worship Transfer to the foundation of idolatry for a nation. Hear me. Who can remember the Ten Commandments? Thou shall not make any. <laughs> Thou shall not bow down to them. Thou shall not have any other God beside me. Revelation chapter 7 from verse 1. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to ought the earth and the sea. Saying, ought not the earth, Mm -hmm. neither the sea, Mm -hmm. nor the trees, Mm -hmm. till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. They want to seal, they want to do what? They want to seal the servants of God. Now, if you are not familiar with eschatology, you may not know what is happening here. This situation is after the rapture of the church. After the, during, this is during the great tribulation, towards the end of the Antichrist reign, when God has finally moved back to the Jews. And God is now identifying with his people. Hello? I say God is identifying with his people. Because if you look at Revelation 7, where God was sealing the Jews. If you go to Revelation 14, you will see where God was sealing the Gentiles. But this is the 144,000 of the Jews. God is now sealing them. The tribes that must be protected. 
And I had the number of them which were sealed. And they were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Asa were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Nephtali was sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Manasseh was sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Simeon was sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Levi was sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Issachar was sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Zebulon was sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Joseph was sealed twelve thousand. And of the tribe of Benjamin was sealed twelve thousand. The Bible said he sealed all. Where is Dan? Where is Dan? Where is Dan? Look at me. The candlestick has been removed. Was Dan not one of the tribes? Why is it at the end of the age Dan is moving? Dan is gone. A whole tribe is gone. Just because of an idolatry that started in one house. God gave them up. It started from sincerity based on ignorance. My people perish. They were God's people, but they were destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Why? Because the priests did not do their job. He said, from the mouth of the priest, which people should seek knowledge. I want you to look at it. You will not see Ephraim. You will not see Dan. You know where their problem started? When there was no distinct voice in the nation. We are at that point, brethren. There is no distinct voice in the nation. Not to speak of now but to speak about the future. In that book, he said, I will not only destroy you, he said, I will forget your children. No Dan! No Ephraim. Why? It is not because of failure of prophecy, failure of anointing, it was because of the failure of the word of God. To the law and to the testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Why is there is no light in them? Because the candlestick has been taken. Bow down your heads first and talk to God. Who are you following? Who is leading you? What, what anointing are you following? What anointing are you following? What evil are you allowing in your body? That can destroy not only you, but your entire family and generations. If God can remove Dan, he can remove anybody. Churches can die from the book of life. He said, he that and that you hear, let him hear what the spirit speaketh unto the churches. As I speak to you, it does not matter whether you have been dealing in drugs up to this moment. It does not matter whether you have been dealing in arm robbery up to this moment. It does not matter whether you have been living in adultery up to this moment. It does not matter whether you have been living under lies and prostitution right now. Remember from where thou hast fallen and repent. God knows what he was doing. I want us to watch a clip. Then you will pray after that. As a preacher, whom probably everyone in here knows, I had a vision about him last year. And in the vision, I saw him in his home. Remain standing, everyone that can. And in the vision, I saw him in his home. And in his home, I saw him smoking a cigarette. And I saw two homosexual guys on his right and on his left. 
and I left the vision in the vision I'm still in the vision but I left the house and went to the service he was preaching and people was going crazy I mean like they was hanging all on the, the roof and ceiling it going crazy because he was preaching so wonderful but then I went back in the vision and saw him leave the church and go back to the house with a boy on the left boy on the left smoking a cigarette came out the vision said Lord what is this he said this is the spirit of perversion that has crept into his life he said I've heeded him and gave him warnings but he refused to listen he said now what I shall do is I shall take the anointing off of him and place it upon another well I seen the preacher and he was preaching and folk was still getting delivered now God told me he'd taken the anointing off of him but I seen him preaching folk got delivered I didn't understand that and the Lord spoke to me I was sitting in that room now I saw folk going crazy but I'm sitting in the service and I'm crying and I wasn't crying because I felt the presence of God I was crying because the church is so deceived that we don't know the presence of God I said we're so deceived that we're shouting we're screaming we're and we don't know the difference between the genuine presence of God and gift huh a lot of folk don't have presence, they just have gift. I have a gift. I can minister to you. I can call out your name. I'm, I'm seeing today. I can call out your name and address it, make you shout, make you give millions and billions and, and trillions of dollars. I know what to say. I know how much money is in your account. Do you know the same God that tell me your name and your addresses and your phone number will tell me whether you're sitting on your money, tell me how much money you're sitting on? Don't you know you can't hide that stuff from me? But I'm concerned about your inner man. See, until you get this inner man right, you can't get this flesh right. We have a good way of dressing up everything on the outside, but being evil on the inside. I see this preacher still operating, preaching. Still call around the country, preaching, going crazy. The Lord spoke to me. He said, son, remember I told you, I'm the only boss that will fire you and let you keep working. You don't play with God. I told God, whatever you do, don't let me be fired and I don't even know it. Pray every morning is God, please don't let me just come to church and preach. And I'm prophesying and folk being delivered and I die and go to hell. God, if it's anything in my life, get it out of me now. Saul was king for 40 years. He was only anointed for two. Two. Two years. That means for 38 years, God left him in position, but the presence of God had left him. You think you're all right because you're still singing the choir. Still preaching behind the pulpit. Still ushering. You think, you think, you don't even know that God done stripped you. Adam, the day you eat the fruit, you shall surely what? Die. Adam was still walking. He was a walking dead man. God spoke to me. He said, son, I got so many ways of killing you and letting your flesh stay alive. Lift your hands. Say, Lord, don't do it to me. Say it again. Lord, don't do it to me.